We're going to take a look how to adjust the relief on a Martin guitar with an adjustable truss rod. <laughs> the principle applies to anything else, but there's going to be some variations, obviously, if you've got a guitar that's not a Martin guitar and it has a truss rod adjustment here, you're not going to be able to use the same sort of uh, technique that I'm going to use. You'll still be able to same principle you're still going to turn it you're still going to do everything like that but this is going to apply specifically to martin this is a 1990s hd28 it has a one-way adjustable truss rod that's accessible with this five millimeter allen wrench through here i've already done a video on this guitar we've done quite a few videos on this guitar where i um did a triage on it uh, I took the neck off. I showed you the neck when it was off the guitar. And then I showed you why it was a good idea to take the neck off. Yeah, that was neck reset thing. So here it is again. I've got to adjust the relief on it because when I had the neck off, I um, lubed the truss rod nut and so it was completely loose. So here we go. Okay. First thing, the reason I know I need to adjust the relief is because... I've got relief. I do not like relief, and I have a, um, I have my reasons for that, which I might explain at the end of this video. I might go do another video on it. We'll see. But basically, the way to check, the, the quick and easy way to check relief, hold string down at the first fret, hold the string down at about the 12th, 13th fret, you know, at the bottom over here, and then you tap it here at the sixth fret. And you can see probably this string, hear that? Quite a bit of relief. Now, if I want to be more scientific about it, um, and you know, I'm dealing with my experience here, so I have a lot of experience doing this. But if you want to be a little bit more technical about it, put a capo on the first fret. Let's make sure we get the GoPro in here. Put a capo on the first fret, get a set of feeler gauges, something that you can measure with. I'm going to set this to um, 12. What I really want is I want a relief that's that's um, 006 or less. So here's an 8. No, here's the 12. Here's the 12 and here's an 8. And I'm just going to do a quick relief. I put this up on my shoulder, hold it down up here, and then I check it at the 6th fret. And we've got about 14 thousandths of an inch. It's clear in the 12 pretty well. I don't care exactly what it is at this point. It's way over, it's over, over 12. It looks like it's pretty close to about 14, maybe even 16. Uh, I want it down to about six thousandths, maybe four thousandths of an inch. So we're ready to adjust, okay? What I do here, I've got a sandbag under here. If you don't have a sandbag, you can get a book. Uh, put a towel over it, anything like that. But you want to prop the middle of this neck up here. And then what I do, get the wrench in here, and it got, it's got to fit snug. So wiggle that wrench around a little bit. Make sure it it's fits nice. As I said already in another video, I do not like these ball end hex wrenches because you lose some gripping surface right here where it curves away and you lose a lot of gripping surface right here and i'm probably going to get a hacksaw and just cut this off right here i want that allen wrench but it works it's got a good handle on it and you don't have to have one of these either you can get hold on You can go down to the hardware store. These are um, these are not metric. You can go down to the hardware store and get a set of these for about 15 bucks. And there's nothing wrong with these at all. Um, if these don't fit this way, then you just put them in this way. No big deal. Stick them in there. Feel free to get a hacksaw and cut them off, you know. You don't have to have a fancy luthier's tool to adjust. I think someone gave me this one, actually. And so I use it. But I've got... Norman Allen wrenches. Anyways, pop it in there. Now, if this is the first time you've done this, it's a really good idea to 
get that wrench in there. And I'm doing it just with the strings on. There's nothing wrong with that. Get that wrench in there and loosen it. This is loosen, okay? Loosen comes towards you in this perspective. I'm on this side of the guitar and the neck's over here, the body's over here. Loosen comes towards me. If you have, loosen it a little bit and then start your tightening procedure. You want to loosen it first just to get a feel for that nut and make sure it's not stuck or spalled or whatever on there. I know this one's good because, like I said, I took it off and I lubed it. And I'm just pulling the strings around here so that I can get that way I want it. There it is. Now it's in. Okay, so if you ever forget which way um, to turn, get yourself a bottle of something. I'm looking for something here. I have super glue all over the place here. <laughs> I'm not sure we want to demonstrate with super glue. Okay, but anyway, here's a bottle of super glue with a lid on it. Set it like this and simply loosen the top. Which way does it go? The top goes this way, right? And this this whole lefty loosey righty tidy business uh, is not a very good way to remember things, in my humble opinion, because it all depends on whether you're at the perspective from the underneath, whether you're from perspective on top, whether your perspective is over here at the nut, or whether your perspective is over here at the rod. And it's a circular motion, so there is no left or right, and even counterclockwise and clockwise depends on the perspective of the nut or the truss rod. So, if I look at this bottle of super glue and look at the lid, and we're going to go down here, and I'm going to turn this thing this way, and that's right. I'm going towards the right, you see? So what, righty tighty? No, I'm going from the right. If I go from the top, like this, then yes, it's left. But it's a baloney measurement, if you ask me, because you'll be upside down on a car, upside down on a car, and you're trying to figure this thing out. Um, it's just better, and even counterclockwise, okay? So this is going which way? This is going counterclockwise, from the perspective of the lid, but it's going clockwise from the perspective of the bottle. So I don't even like counterclockwise or clockwise. I just suggest you get used to the feel of which way is, is tight and which way is loose. If you have trouble figuring out which way is which, then you get a bottle of something and stand it up here. This is the nut of the truss rod, and this is the, the rod itself. And this way is loosen, and that way is tighten. So again, it's going away from me, the top. The top is going away from me to tighten, and the top is coming towards me to loosen. Okay? I do that a lot of times when I'm working on my motorcycle, and I'm underneath, I'm upside down. I use the gas cap, you know? Which way does the gas cap go? And then I set my wrench to it, and then I go underneath. And then eventually, you get really good at it. Anyways. That's how you tighten, that's how you loosen. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to weight the body down over here with this arm. I'm going to hold the body with my elbow down here. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to put pressure on the headstock, not the headstock, the nut. I'm going to put pressure at the nut, and I'm going to counteract that neck tension. I'm not going to let this nut do all the work. I'm going to pre-stress it. So hand goes right here does not go out on the headstock. No. I don't think you'll snap the headstock off, but, you know, why risk it? So, don't put your hand there. Put your hand here on the nut. Put your elbow on the body. Push. And if you look, you can see those strings moving. Man, I can push those strings clear out of the fingerboard doing this. Not a big deal. I mean, you're not going to snap that neck apart. That's where it's going to go anyways. And so all you're doing is pre-stressing it. So I'm going to push it down here, pre-stress it. Got my elbow down here, just a little bit of pressure, and turn. And that's really loose. And I can tell it's going to go more than that. In fact, at this point, I can just go ahead and tighten it a little bit. Out there. Make sure that's in there. Pre-stress the neck. So much easier when you pre-stress it. I'm going to take a look at it and see how it's doing. So, and in this case, I'm just going to look at it. I'm not going to bother um, measuring it yet. 
still got quite a bit. I bet it's probably it's probably at eight thousandths of an inch now. Let's get the eight out and see how we're doing. Eight thousandths of an inch. Six strut. Oh yeah, it's well below eight, isn't it? It might even be by uh, six by now. Let me give it just a little bit more. Get that in there. Put my elbow on. Pre-shush the neck a little. And that's it. You know, it doesn't take much. And that's good. I got just the tiniest amount. Well, it's not the tiniest amount. It could go less. Let's see if we can get this on camera. I'm going to hold this here at the uh, 12th fret, 13th fret, in between the two. And... That's how much we got. Great. You can also check your other strings, but you can't you can't twist your neck. So it doesn't really make any difference. I will tell you though that the low E they, they tend to get more and more relief as they go across the fingerboard. So you know that's why you can even go a little bit lower on that. that low E. In fact, I think I'm going to. I'm gonna give it just a hair more. Take a little bit more out. Make sure that's seated in there. Elbow over here. Pre stress neck. Twist a little bit. Oh, I like that. That's good.